Hey everybody, this is JJ, Machine Man Live, downtown Dallas, filming live on location, Rusty Greer, welcome to the show. Thanks JJ. Grew up in Albertville together, but really just probably half a mile from each other. I know I could ride my bicycle over there and meet it, so it, we haven't seen each other in 30 years. Uh, I've kind of lived vicariously through TV, videos, and things like that to keep up with Rusty, so you really, we've, we've been talking for the last two hours, so it, it was not a marketing ploy, <laughs> as it once appeared. So, Rusty, welcome to the show, man. Good Thanks, to see you. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yes, yeah. sir. All right, man. What's been going on? Uh, shoot, been, uh, well, been living here in, in Colleyville, Texas since 1997. Yeah. Um, my three kids are now 16. They're going to Colleyville Heritage High School. And uh, other than that, man, I chase them around, coach baseball. And, of course, uh, I'm sure we'll get into playing playing days in a little bit. But uh, played with the Rangers for 10-plus years and in the minor league system for four. And um, made our home here. And. We love it. Wouldn't wouldn't be anywhere else. Yeah. So you've been here, twenty years. Twenty, 20 years. Yeah. Twenty, 20 years. years. Yeah. You, and your children, uh, following the dash footsteps. Uh, well, I got one that's a wakeboarder. I have one that's a baseball player. My daughter, she's in the band. Uh -huh. So uh, we kind of got them going different different ways, but they can all drive now, so we're good. There's no more taxi service. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that, man. I'm living that. Gus, the rest is ahead of the I'm, I'm behind the curve. I got uh, eight, nine, and three, so uh, it's a while before I get there. Uh, okay, so you, they go to a local high school, I'm assuming. Yeah, they go to a local high about two miles down the road. You married a girl from here? From, from uh, no, down. I married uh, my wife. is from Boaz. From Boaz. Boaz, Boaz yeah. uh, she went to Sneed State, and then I'm in Mono Valley where I went to college. And yeah. uh, uh, married her and, and been happily married since 94. All right. All right. So uh, let <clears throat> let me talk about this. So a, as a child, as we said, we, we literally grew up we just a couple blocks from each other. <clears throat> and I, I will tell you that, that I, but I was in shock when, when Rusty would I heard that he played for the Rangers. Okay. Always a phenomenal athlete. Okay. But I, every time that, as I told Michael, every time that I rode to his house, he was he was shooting basketball. Man, I mean, in weather like this, 103 Texas heat, it wouldn't matter. Rusty was playing basketball. He could. It could dribble like Allen Ives. I don't know. I mean, it was <laughs> unfreaking believable. No, he was an unbelievable basketball player. And, uh, you know, we were talking about a couple of things. And he was, he was obviously talking about his children, who he's very proud of. And, uh, and you know, we, we went on to talk about uh, what, what are the two things you can't give somebody rusty? Uh, my thing is you can't give effort and attitude. Uh, effort you can't attitude. teach to effort and attitude. So, uh, for me, what I tell my kids, um, especially my baseballer, is that, I can't control whether I get a hit. Now, you can't control whether you sell a machine, but you can control the effort and attitude that that uh, you go about getting that job done. And so I think that's a good life lesson for especially younger kids. Uh, when when the when the effort's not there, you're not going to perform. When the performance's not there, your attitude's going to go down. When your attitude goes down, you're going you're not going to be successful. Yeah. yeah oh, well, exactly. You have to. Use the, the, your body follows your mind. So, I mean, winners win, losers lose, and, and it all it, it all starts right, that's right. here. So you know the. Well, <laughs> so, uh, all right, so I, I just, you know, I'm eager to catch up. As I said, this is probably the easiest interview I've ever done because from, like I said, I haven't seen him in 30 years. I've kind of just, just followed on TV. So, all right, what happened after graduated out of high school? I, I knew when you were in Montevallo State, we didn't, I went to Jackson State High School, Montevallo's in Montevallo, mm -hmm. in the city of a very small municipality. But, right. Yeah. So, graduated high school. Um, and wanted to play college basketball, but uh -huh. uh, realized that I, I probably didn't have the skill to go on and play professionally. Um, and that was one of my goals was to be a professional athlete. And so I thought, man, I'm, I'm not too bad at baseball. I might as well give that a try. <laughs> and so really started focusing on baseball towards the end of my senior year in high school. And then Montevallo offered me a scholarship, which is the only scholarship offer I had to play baseball. Uh, coach there was named Bob Reasoner, assistant coach named Doug Sisson. Uh, so I went to Montevallo out of high school, um, spent three years there, got drafted as a junior, and left and went with the Texas Rangers. Got drafted in the 10th round in the 1990 draft. Uh, so three years in college, um, went to rookie ball, which rookie ball is a half a season, call it short season A ball, and I was in Butte, Montana. I played up there for oh, well. two and a half months. Beautiful country. It's really beautiful country, but. Uh, I was ready to get out of Butte. Right. I, I drove through there and didn't yeah, have cell I mean, service. I mean, I'm no bueno yeah. at Well, back then there wasn't no cell service. <laughs> back there was landline. Okay. Um, so, played a half season there. I went to uh, what's called Instructional League in the, in the uh -huh. fall. Basically, your, your people that perform well or, or top prospects in an organization will go to Instructional League. Um, went to Instructional League, came back, uh, went to high ball, which at the time 
Um, most of the guys that were in, in rookie ball went to a place called Gastonia, North Carolina, which was low A ball. And uh, I bypassed that, which I was pretty proud of. Went to the Florida State <laughs> League. Yeah, I was happy with it. Florida State League. Um, played a year there. Went back to Instruction League. Came back. Uh, went to Double A. Uh, went to Double A my first year. I kind of messed around. And, and going back to Effort and Attitude, I kind of messed around. And all my buddies were getting put on the big league roster. Mm -hmm. So when you go on the big league roster. And, and back up, you were where now? I was my first year in Double A, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay, okay Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa. All right. And so um, all my buddies were getting put on the roster, big league roster after that year. And uh, I was kind of, uh, uh, I, was, I, I wasn't put on the roster. And so I, I had to ask myself, being put on the roster means you go to big league camp. Right. And that kind of really starts the trek of getting the big leagues. Because now you're on a 40-man roster. And if there's an injury or something like that, they don't have to make a roster spot. You're, on, you're already on the roster. And so all my buddies I played with for three years, two, two and a half years were, were on the roster. So I kind of stepped back and said, all right, is this something you want to do or not? And yeah, let, let, let me intervene right there. But you were making huge money right then, right? No, no, I was, making, I was making zero. <laughs> I money. say that sarcastically because I'm yeah. saying, and, yeah. and were you married then? I was not married. I was okay. single, yeah. Okay, but you, you're living off. I was living off twelve hundred dollars a month. Okay, effort attitude. Effort and attitude. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Effort, twelve hundred dollars. Twelve twelve hundred dollars a month. I was living off of, and that's before taxes. So it was right. Whatever no. it was ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, sharing a farm with three other people, that kind of deal. And so, looked at myself in the mirror and said, "Is this what you want to do, or is it not? Because if it's not, you ain't making no money. You got to go finish yeah, college. Well, I got to make a life. I got to make a decision. I right? finished college. I left college early, so I had to get a degree." Uh, so I said, you know what, um, this is what I want to do. I have my whole life. So the second year I went back, I got after it in the off season. came back to AA, had a real good year in AA, went to AAA the same year. Um, we're, the, we're still in Tulsa, still right? In, okay. We went from Tulsa to Oklahoma City in AAA. Okay. okay. Yeah. Then from there, um, they put me on the Arizona Fall League roster, which is like um, winter ball for top prospects in the organization, in each organization. And I was in t uh, Tucson, Arizona. And so I spent I spent the, the – fall and early winter they are playing and fortunately my first manager Kevin Kennedy they were out watching their their guys in the fall league and so I was doing really well against really good really good players and so he wanted me to be put on the roster so finally I got on the roster and um, once I was put on the roster I said okay now now I'm, I'm, I'm here and so <laughs> that winter I got after it even harder and so I went to camp in 94 my first camp and was the last player cut um, out of camp, I actually made the trip to uh, the exhibition trip to Houston. Uh, we played in the Houston Astrodome, which was my first big league stadium to play in. And um, the last day they cut me and they kept another guy. And so I went to AAA, which is in Oklahoma City. I played there for 30 days, roughly 29, 30 days. Uh, Gary Reedus, um, he was the he was one of the outfielders on the roster at the time. He got hurt, and I was the only outfielder that was on the 40 man. And so they called me up, and it was a, uh, they called me up May 16th of 1994. Flew to Oakland, California. Uh, first game was the next day, May 16th. Uh, funniest thing, a guy named Jackie Moore, who uh, Jackie Moore is um, one of the greatest baseball guys you'll ever meet. He was the bench coach for, for Kevin Kennedy. And he, uh, he came up and said, hey, kid. He said, congratulations. Uh, congratulations on getting called up. I said, Thank I said, thanks, Jackie. He said, you ready to play? I said, you bet. I mean, what else am I say? You bet. He said, good, you're hitting second plane right. And when he said that, my heart went right in my throat. <laughs> right in my throat. And I said, man, I said, are you sure? And he, and he kind of laughed and walked off. Well, I looked at the lineup. I was hitting second plane right. And so wound up going uh, three for five that night. Um, mm. First hit in the, in the big leagues is a home run. Um, and then from there, just kept playing. And, and um Wound up staying ten plus years. So yeah, man, today. for for the Texas Rangers. All right, so uh, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. What, 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 is there any one point in your in your career? And I know there's got to be many in the ten plus decade. But, you know, all right. Let, let me let me back up for one second because I, I, I can only imagine. And this is uh, my words, not Rusty's. Is that you understand that making like twelve hundred dollars a month minus taxes and living with a few other guys and you know. Separated, from probably your, your family and XYZ and this and that, is that I mean, you know, passion's a big thing to me. Effort, attitude, you know, I think you come from all those things to be called anything. We can use any attitudes, anything like that to describe effort and attitude. Um, for, for the context of this conversation, I'm just going to say passion because it was sheer passion. Rusty has been passionate uh, ever since I've ever known him. 
you know, and he's, he's been, uh, he's, he's this guy. <laughs> You've always been this guy, you know what I'm saying? He's always been monotone, he's always just been uh, soft earth, uh, really, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it's unbelievable. And, and stardom, and I know it's probably a little embarrassing to you, is that stardom couldn't happen to a nicer guy, and I mean that. Well, I so after the four years of probably what you deem, I'm just sure you question yourself over those four years when you're mm -hmm. really trying oh, to get yeah, up sure, and, yeah. and your friends are going and this and that. And you say, hey, man, i got to get better in the offseason, X, Y, Z. And, you know, uh, as you said, you know, you tell there was mixed emotions in your mind. Should I go get my, finish my degree, go do X, Y, Z? Because you were going to be responsible. That was right. hands down, never a question. Uh, but you knew what you wanted to do. Sure. You you knew what you wanted well, to do. Well, I had I had I knew what I wanted to do, but then I had the backup plan of being a, uh, I wanted to be a college baseball coach too. So um, that was kind of the decision. And, and to be honest with you, when I got to AAA, I said I was 25, and I said, okay, this is it. I said if I don't make it, then I then I've got to go. By that time, I'd gone back to school and gotten my degree. Oh, okay. So uh, yeah, when we when we went on strike in 1994, uh, we went um, in August of 94, which put me in right in the right time to get back to school, get my degree. Did you go to Montevallo? Went to Montevallo, oh, yeah, yeah, get yeah. my degree, and then I left. We They ended the strike in March, so I left in March. So I had one semester, basically, to, to get everything done. And so I got it, got my degree. So once I got to AAA, I had my degree in hand. Uh, I said, this is it. If I don't get, if I don't make it this time, because that would have been five going on six years. Um, I said, now I'm going to go be a a college coach or be a coach of some sort. Maybe it's teach high school and coach, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But I got to do something because I had zero in the bank. And I'm talking about less than zero in the bank. Yeah. And uh, I'm 25 years old, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting married in, the, in right, December. Right, right. You know, so, uh, but fortunately it worked out. And um, unfortunately, Gary Reedus got hurt. Fortunately for me, he got hurt and I stayed in the big league, so. Yeah, he, he, never, he never came back to the big No, I never no, came back. He, matter of fact, fact, he was, he was, he was just pulled a hamstring. He was retiring at the end of the year anyway. Mm -hmm. And so they told him, hey, just basically um, call it a career and we're going to keep keep me on the roster uh, and play. So that's that's how it worked out. I mean, did you, so did, I'm going to ask maybe what may appear to be a silly question, but did you ever picture yourself in the bigs or picture yourself oh, yeah. playing for the NBA? Uh, well, I picture you? myself. Once I, once I got the basketball deal out of my mind, right. and you're right, I love basketball. Yeah, I, was, I, mean, people, I, I think that's what people I, don't know I about you, it. that basketball is, yeah. The time I could dribble, I loved it. I went to basketball <clears throat> camps and did all this stuff. And, and uh, you know, when, when you guys were out on Friday and Saturday night having a good time, I was in the Coliseum shooting basketball. Exactly. And uh, so that's what I wanted to do. But here again, fortunately, the way the wheels work, I got – I became a baseball player, and so yeah, as I was as I was in college, I said after my freshman year in college, when I started having teams approach me about transferring to a junior college, so they could draft me as a sophomore, that kind of registered with me. Hey, maybe I am good enough to play pro ball, not in the big leagues, but pro ball. But if I can get my foot in the door in the minor leagues, I just got to keep doing what I'm doing and work my way and go. And so, but the biggest thing about the minor leagues is um, there's a lot of guys who are more talented than me. And, and that never even made it or made it for a very short period of time. But when you get on a bus and you're riding 16 hours, uh, this road trip, eight hours the next road trip, seven and a half the next, nine the next, it takes some want to to, to want to do something. And I, that's what I wanted to do. And once I got to double A, I said, I'm, a, I'm an injury away. Uh, and so then I just, I just kept pushing and plugging. And, but at some point you have to realize that I don't want to be a career minor leaguer right when there's other other things i can do and and sure. utilize what i've learned which would be a coach yeah yeah so uh yeah so i i, I imagine the four-year stretch to uh double a triple a and all that prior to getting to the bigs was almost was exasperating as the whole career <laughs> in the, in the big, so, <laughs> but it's one of the funnest times too so, so tell me as, all right so we, we're not first hit in the in, as a ranger you hit one out uh, yes, first hit my second. So, I mean, it's just blast from the beginning, right? Well, uh, we got to, we get to Oakland, and um, playing Oakland. Jackie Moore, Jackie Moore says says what he says to me, and um, so I'm hitting second. A uh, buddy of mine named David Hulse leads the game off with a single, so I was asked to bunt my first at bat. I've never bunted in my life. Uh, <laughs> so very very foreign to me. You know, you go through the bunting drill, yeah. but you don't ever think you're going to bunt. So I get a bunt sign, I miss it. Uh, they give me another bunt sign. Um, I do something else. Anyway, it goes on the count. I wind up not getting the button down, popping the ball up second. 
And so I come back to the dugout and um, come on my next at bat and I uh, hit a 3-2 changeup, which I'd fouled off six or seven pitches, got a 3-2 changeup hit out in right field. Came around the, <laughs> came around the, the uh, Came around the diamond there, and yeah, I mean, you know Will Clark. I mean, Will Clark's oh, yeah, a hero of mine. Yeah. Um, he was standing there on deck. I've got a picture of it. I came through shaking his hand. He said, "That's a hell of a way to break in the big leagues." <laughs> and so I remember it like it was yesterday. But the funny thing is, he had a home run his first at bat on the first pitch he saw. So he knew that what it felt like to hit that first home run. And so um, after that, I went on to play the game. But yeah, the first hit was a was a. Was a and so I mean, you could. Confidence is at all time yeah. high, and I mean that's that means a lot. But I could I could have hung him up right there because I made the big leagues, I'd gotten a hit, I'd hit in a home run, driven in a run, scored a run, and I hadn't struck out yet. I hadn't struck out yet, so I could have retired right there and been happy as well. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Well, will you give that try? I thought I had four to the cause. I, I'm sorry, Russ. My goodness. Would you right. expect anything different? <laughs> I know it. Well, it was a, yeah, so, so maybe ride right along and after, <laughs> wait till I get my money right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, I, you, you've watched some Z-Man Live before. I, all, all my songs have got, there, there's at least one lyric in there that's got meaning to me. So that, it's <laughs> that one in particular and, and what some I told you previous to the show. So, all right, so as, as your career boss, your Texas Ranger, and I'll tell you that, it, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable how thought of you are in this city, and and, and I'm sure the state of Texas, you know, but the city of Dallas, and uh, you know. But uh, as you said, I was playing basketball when, and he put it mildly, why me and my friends were having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so and we're the exact same age, uh, and, and so you know, as I said, he's always been this guy, and, and uh, maybe I hadn't always been this guy. <laughs> so. Uh, so, you know, so, all right, so I didn't, you know, that's something I didn't know about, right? I didn't know his first one. What, what was your career batting average? Career average 305. 305 career. So I played, uh, I played every day for eight years, and I got hurt and was off and on for a couple of years, and then, um, and, uh, then I wound up retiring just because I, my, my heart and my mind wanted to, but my body wouldn't let me. And so I wound up 305 career average, which, um, to me, I, that's one of the ones I hang my hat on. Yes. Uh, because hitting... Hitting a baseball is hard. I don't care what level you have, but in the big leagues, it's, it's tough. And uh, so, so I'm, I'm really proud of that. Oh, that, sure, yeah. That figure. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's, that's why I brought it up. I mean, in excess of so, uh, 100 miles an hour. Don't know where it's going. Yeah, look like hour. a nickel. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, so it changes. I mean, so, you know, on a level, it, you know, probably the, the – you could just nobody could comprehend. You know what I mean? Right. Bam! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's. It, it looks like, like it's going slow. Yeah. From the from from the bleachers, but when you get when you get in the box. Um, oh yeah. You, you, it, you know, and it put. Uh, I went to a game to a, to a Braves game, and I I mean, I was right there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. And and just to hear it hit the, yep. the pitcher's glove was just. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you think it's loud on TV? I mean, that that ball was moving. Right. Well, well you're the, right the there, thing you're right. it is, when it's it's coming that fast. It's not the fastball. It's the, it's the uh, any, anybody can hit a good fastball yeah. because it comes down to timing. But when they go from 95 to 78 with a changeup, change and then a 96 mile hour fastball and a 78 mile hour break, that's when it becomes you really have no time to react, and you got to be right in tune with what the pitcher's doing. And uh, that's why they say hitting the baseball is the hardest thing to do in sports. Yeah, Michael Jordan proved that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. you know, hey, listen, we, we you know? couldn't be a yeah. greater athlete. No, but I don't think anybody with any more passion in the world that I've ever seen. Right. And uh, you know, to the extent that he says I can do it, just yeah. like you did, you know what I mean. Right. But but I will tell you that that was living proof that that, yeah. that not everybody can because we, you know you we know he's got hand eye coordination. Oh yeah, we know he's an athlete. You know what I mean. I mean, he can jump out of gym and do whatever. But. Uh, I went to see him play for the Birmingham Barons, and I—I I, I mean, it was a little embarrassing to me, but for him, you know, mm -hmm. because he was such a hero and such, you know, that I re really felt like that. Was. Yeah. But all right, so moving right along, what, is there just one moment? I mean, as, as you as you played for the Rangers, I, I mean, I, I can only imagine hundred some games where you all play one six times six games a year. So that's that's, some, that's that's grueling. It's got to be seven uh, days a week. It's seven days a week. Yeah, and traveling and flying traveling, yeah. and place to place and and. So your dad through all this? Well, the first I mean, uh, the first five years, no, uh, thirty. But you're married. Yes, but you're married. Yeah. Back to the whole time yeah. you're in the bigs. Yeah, yeah, uh huh, for sure. Okay, yeah. and 
Um, I'm sorry, I don't know you, Ash, no, and Boaz, right. but that is Marshall County, and I'll keep you from mine for that many years. <laughs> so about halfway year, so you're five years into the bigs, and, and I guess y'all, you, you have your first have, have son? Our first, 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 first uh, well, our first kid we had, and then, um, so that was that was a little bit, a uh, little bit different uh, because now you're used to you're used to going and doing as you please and yeah. coming home and getting your rest and now you're, you're coming home and you have yeah, yeah. A, a responsibility, new kid, responsibility. Yes. Yes. and um, so fortunately my wife is really good hey this is this is your job I'm, I'll do I'll do everything no, and so sure. I come home for road trip get home at three thirty four o'clock in the morning um, I didn't have to get up. And I, I slept until whenever I needed to because I had to go to the ballpark the next day. So she was really great about that. And, and uh, she was kind of the glue that held all that together, um, especially later in my career when I was rehabbing and hurt and all yeah. that stuff. And so, yeah, but now it's, uh, you got three 16 year olds <laughs> and high insurance bills. Hey, you're in high insurance bills. All right, what's the defining moment as a Texas Ranger for us to hear? Um, I mean, you were so passionate about. Doing that and being that, you know what I mean. That, I mean, I know the first first one being a Dean Don was great, right? Out of yeah, the park. that's that's, but, that's a but, given. But you know, you, you got to play that really. You're that, that, that everybody knows you, for, right? Um, well, I, I tell you, I'll give you a couple of defining moments. Okay. One, one of them was Kenny Rogers' perfect game. Uh, that was my rookie year in, in July 28th of '94. Tell everybody, that. I was watching. Uh, okay, so we're playing Anaheim. They're Los Angeles Angels, Anaheim. Now back then they were just Anaheim Angels, and um, um, might have been even. Los, uh, California. Matter of fact, it's California Angels. Then they swapped to Anaheim. California Angels. And uh, game starts. I'm playing center field. Normal game. Hitting seven. And all of a sudden we get to the third, fourth, fifth inning, sixth inning, and Kenny hadn't given up a hit or a walk or anything. And then it kind of registers with you, hey, there's a perfect game going on here. And so the crowd kind of begins to see that. And so then they, sixth inning, they're standing up from the sixth inning on. Um, I'm talking about didn't sit down. And uh, so we go through the seventh, eighth, and with every ball, crowd with 47,000. Oh, yeah, everybody boo, was jacked, yeah. They'd boo with every strike, they'd, they'd scream. And uh, top of the ninth comes up, and Rex Hudler, who uh, is a great, uh, he's a great story in himself. <laughs> uh, Rex Hudler comes up, and he leads the inning off, and he hits a flare, kind of a flare to right center. And I came in, dove, and caught it. Of course, the crowd erupts, and, and um, and then I wind up catching the last out in that inning two off of uh, Gary DeSarcina hit that ball. And actually, I kind of lost that ball. I don't know if you ever saw the video. I caught it above my head. And uh, in the ballpark there, the facade is the same color as the baseballs when they rub it up. Mm -hmm. So when it goes through the facade, you have to wait for a split second to wind up coming out. Well, that ball went through the facade, and I didn't see it. And finally, it came out. And I caught it above my head. I played it off good, but <laughs> not, many, not many people knew that. So, but anyway, that – Catch, diving, catching a perfect game. That's one of the defining moments. Okay, and I mean the perfect game for any sport. Okay, the, the pitcher, all right, the pitchers, the, the pitchers throw a no hitter, right? The, no hitter, no, no, hitter, no hitter, no walks. No, no hits, no walks. So at okay, the time, so. there'd only been 13 done in the history of baseball. Absolutely. So I mean, this this was huge, and it was a huge. It was, I mean, right. as Mike was saying before the show, it was talked about for about an inning and a half. Who was in that? Who was commentator of that game? Rex Hudler. Rex Hudler, okay. Yeah, and so he did a great job. It was, uh, yeah, I mean, things changed right then for you. Oh, I mean, yeah. you, were, you got very, very, you were very well known. That, that kind of put me on yeah. the map. As a matter of fact, Rex Hudler came up the next day during batting practice, and our third base coach was Jerry Naren, and uh, he said, hey, Jer, and um, he turned and said, and I was standing there with him, and he said, I just put this kid's, uh, kid's career on the map, didn't I, with that play, and, and so we all laughed about it, but he's, Pretty much right, he did because yeah. that got me some recognition right away, and uh, kind of established me as a as a guy that would dive for balls and do whatever I needed to to, to make plays. And um, but that was one I'd say one defining moment was when the the Rangers won the the AL West for the first time in '96. They never won it, and I was I was on that team. Um, great group of guys, and then probably the third was when I was inducted into the Rangers Hall of Fame. That was yeah. a big, oh, yeah. big defining moment. Yeah. Uh, that let me know that. That I'd done something right. Sure. Over the course of my career, right or wrong, I'd done something. You know, and uh, so that was a big one too. Yeah. Well, that, that man, that's fantastic. All right. So, Rusty, today is uh, so. I know Mom's glad to get you on. You know, it's uh, was there any time after, after your career with the Rangers? I mean, was there? You know, was were you, were you glad to be out of the bigs? Was it a little depressing? Was I mean, what uh, did you, you just know, it's, it's tough, you know, especially being injured and had to retire a little bit early because I wanted to play. It, I was forty. 
It's tough. Uh, it's just a little bit of, de I mean, it's depressing. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's your only skill set. That's all you've known your entire life. Uh, depressing. I miss it every day. Yeah. Um, still. I mean, every, still every day. Yeah. I watch baseball. I mean, I miss it. It's yeah. just a great, it, it's, it's no, uh, man, camaraderie, yeah. uh, locker room, playing fights, but then going out and competing every day. Um, it, it's that's something you can't ever replace. That adrenaline that you would get when it's bases yeah. loaded, two outs in the bottom of the ninth. You, there's nothing out there that'll replace that. And I miss that. I miss it every day. And, yeah. Uh, so well, yeah, and you were uh, like-minded people, people that were just as passionate as you were. You know, man. Right. I mean, that that takes a lot. I mean, to, I mean to, you know, it's just like one percent of people. <laughs> you know, right, I mean, yeah, just, sure. I mean, it's a very small percentage. So uh, I'm, I'm sitting with Rarity, and I'm and I'm I'm extremely honored. What's Rust, what's Rusty Greer doing today? Uh, well, I, uh, I uh, of course I coach my kids' team. Uh, I kind of monitor what they're all doing, and then uh, I sell commercial LED lights. Uh -huh. um, and uh, outside of that, um, I uh, that's pretty much it. So yeah. it's uh, it's a little bit of work, and a little bit of baseball, and we kind of travel around and do some showcase camps for my kid. Yeah. And, and then, uh, but that's it really. Um, you do anything with the Rangers now? Uh, yeah, I do. I do personal appearances for them. Yeah. And uh, so whenever they need me, I'll go up there and I'll, I'll sign on the or visit suites or something like that. And, and eventually I'd like to get back on the field, um, whether that I love amateur baseball, uh, would like to be a, a college coach at some point. That probably won't happen just from the standpoint I'm not willing to really move anywhere. And, uh, but, you know, <laughs> I hate to play I, talk. I, 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 uh, but, Get back on the field in Pro Bowl. Once my kids are gone, that would be kind of cool, I think. And work my try to work my way up to big league manager uh, at some point. So that would be my goal anyway. It may not work out, but it'd be the goal. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't think you've ever. <laughs> it won't be from lack of effort. I can tell you that. <laughs> Rusty, listen. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. I, I even. Uh, I, I hate even put people put people in this position. Uh, it's, it's, it, I know it's been tough. Uh, it's. It, for those of you that are maybe new to Machine Man Live, or, or you know, our, our little feed is, 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 Rusty's tried real hard for two months and been in constant contact with us and, and just been, just been Rusty, you know. And so his kids were, hey, I know he was shooting all over Dallas. He was going to come over here and, and he, he finally texted me and said, JJ, let's do it on X, which is August 10th yeah. today. And he said, uh, after a couple failed attempts, one, one was my fault. I had to fly out, but, uh, you know, he said, I want to be able to take my time when I get here. And then, and he has, man. He's, he's been here for a couple hours, and, and that's all your time will take up. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you, JJ. Very much. Thank you very much.